Yes, I'd like to call the Mentor City Council regular meeting of Tuesday, November 21st, 2017 to order. The invocation will be given by Councilman Donovan. Heavenly Father, we thank thee for this day. Help us to use good judgment for the business at hand and guide us in wisdom with a continuing sense of truth and fairness for the community we represent. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Julie, please call the roll. Mrs. Dowling? Here. Mr. Kirchner? Here. Mr. Krieger? Here. Mr. Landig? Here. Mr. Marn? Here. Mr. Blake? Here. Mr. Donovan? Here. Uh, Council's in receipt of the minutes of the work session of November 8th, 2017. Moved to approve. Second. Please call the roll. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. And the regular meeting of November 8th, 2017. Moved to approve. Second. Second. Please call the roll. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Uh, public hearings, we have none. New legislation. Ordinance number 17-0-117. An ordinance authorizing the execution and delivery of an economic development grant with Alexis Health Consulting, Inc. and declaring an emergency. Mr. Philippe. Thank you, Madam President. It's always my pleasure to be able to introduce to you a new business to our community, especially on the eve of Small Business Saturday. Mr. Traub. Thank you, Mr. Filipiak. Members of, uh, of Council, you have a uh, staff report that uh, outlines the uh, proposal before you uh, this evening. The uh, health consulting firm is, uh, as is indicated in the opening sentence of the staff report, uh, an infectious disease management uh, company providing inpatient and outpatient clinical services staff report goes on to describe the fact that they were basically utilizing a time-sharing space in uh, communities throughout uh, throughout Lake County and actually had a management office in the in the city of Willoughby because of the uh, uh, growth in in their business they decided to consolidate their uh, uh, offices into uh, into one here in the uh, in the city of Menor they are uh, purchasing a, uh, a building, will be renovating that building, and uh, again, a, a number of uh, uh, medical professionals will be uh, operating out of, uh, out of that facility. Based on the uh, guidelines that uh, we've utilized for uh, Mentor Incentive Grants, uh, I'm, the administration is recommending a grant in the amount of uh, $8,000. I would note that um, uh, and, and I'm just going to use her, her first name because I, I tried practicing the <laughs> second name and it, it just doesn't work for me. Uh, uh, Abby is in the, uh, the audience to the extent that uh, members of council have any questions. Thank you. Gentlemen? Move to suspend. Second. Please call the roll. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Move to pass. Second. Please call the roll. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Barn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Landy? Yes. Ordinance number 17-0-117 has been approved. Ordinance number 17-0-118. An ordinance to authorize transfers of funds, advances of funds, and revisions to appropriations and declaring an emergency. Mr. Filippiak. Thank you, Madam President. Mr. Malinowski, please. Thank you, Mr. Filippiak. <clears throat> Members of Council, this ordinance does a number of things. Firstly, uh, the transfer of funds that affect seven different funds are outlined in the staff memo. Uh, five are to close out existing funds and two are to uh, cover the cost of claims, both in the uh, self-insured workers' comp fund and the medical self-insured fund for our uh, medical claims, health care claims. Uh, secondly, there are three temporary cash advances out of our uh, general fund to fund road projects, as out outlined in the middle of the staff report, and a fourth advance out of our TIF fund to uh, cover a portion of the city share of the State Route 306 resurfacing fund. And then finally, as outlined, a 
several appropriation, numerous appropriation revisions, all our increases to various funds to cover the activity as noted above and several other uh, items that needed budget. I recommend approval of the entire ordinance. Thank you. Gentlemen? Move to suspend. Second. Please call the roll. Mrs. <coughs> Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Open passage. Second. Please call the roll. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Ordinance number 17-0-118 has been approved. Ordinance number 17-0-119. An ordinance providing the issuance and sale of bonds in the maximum principal amount of $1,075,000 for the purpose of paying costs of improving the city's stormwater sewer system by constructing and improving a detention basin together with necessary and related drainage facilities and all necessary impertinences thereto and declaring an emergency. Mr. Filipiak. Thank you, Madam President. I'll make a few general comments about uh, the next eight ordinances, all of which deal with uh, the issuance and sale of uh, bonds by the City of Mentor. The City Council and the administration uh, had a work session um, <coughs> a, a few weeks back, and we spent a great deal of time discussing the upcoming bond issuance that uh, followed our last issue, uh, which was uh, just a couple weeks back. Happy to report that the city did receive a very favorable um, interest rate at just about 2.3% for 20-year money on the approximate uh, $5 million worth of bonds that we issued. In totality, these eight projects um, consolidated will mean an issuance of about $9.92 <coughs> million. Um, they represent predominantly $7.5 million dollars. Uh, projects that have rolled over from our bond anticipation notes. Uh, those projects include uh, the purchase of the Springbrook land, uh, phase one of the Old Village Lighting Project, Murray Avenue Storm Sewer local match, uh, local match for the Marigold Road, uh, road rehabilitation project, the final amount of our local portion for Heisley Road, and the final portion for Plaza Boulevard. The two projects that are new and outside of that bond anticipation note um, span of projects include the second, which we have determined to be the second phase of Springbrook Gardens, which of course is an appropriation that we'll be asking council to make in the upcoming uh, budget ordinance for 2018, and uh, the final uh, allocation and, uh, needed uh, to close out the two-town uh, stream enhancement project. Um, so with respect to this first ordinance, number uh, 119, this is for the two-town ditch improvement. Go ahead. Mr. Malinowski, do you want to make any comments about the schedule and of the issuance and that? Certainly. Um, <clears throat> the only thing noteworthy would be the timing on these. We are scheduled to sell these bonds in December, December 19th with a close date of January 24th before the bans uh, mature on January 26th. So um, other than that, the term uh, on these bonds will be set at not to exceed 20 years. We would anticipate the lighting project uh, at a 15-year term, everything else at 20 years. And uh, other than that, I think we'll do real well. There's going to be a lot of competition in the bond market, somewhat due to uh, tax reform at the federal level. So we anticipate a good sale. Thank you. Madam President? Yes. Uh, I'd like to thank the administration and council and the engineering especially for uh, listening to us about our water issues with our, with our constituents and uh, basically doing everything we possibly can to keep water out of people's houses and basements and yards. I really want to thank everybody for that. And the, and the residents really appreciate it, too. Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen? Move to suspend. Second. Please call the roll. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Move to approve. Second. Please call the roll. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Ordinance number 17-0-119 has been approved. Ordinance number 17-0-120.
an ordinance providing for the issuance and sale of bonds in the maximum principal amount of $1,225,000 for the purpose of paying costs of installing street lighting poles, arms, and LED fixtures in the city's old village area and declaring an emergency. Any additional comments? Yeah, the only thing I would add, Council, to this is that um, reminder that the repayment for these uh, <coughs> bonds will be a combination and really an equal split between special assessment through our uh, street lighting fund and TIF proceeds. So, you know, once again, Council's foresight on uh, utilizing that TIF project is able to provide, in this case, at least one more enhancement project. We'll just spend second. Please call the roll. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Who do approve? Second. Please call the roll. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Ordinance number 17-0-120 has been approved. Ordinance number 17-0-121. An ordinance providing for the issuance and sale of bonds in the maximum principal amount of $530,000 for the purpose of paying costs of improving Murray Avenue by constructing storm sewers and related drainage facilities and declaring an emergency. Mr. Filippi? No additional no comment. Move to Gentlemen? suspend. Second. Please call the roll. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Who do approve? Second. Please call the roll. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirshner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. <coughs> Ordinance number 17-0-121 has been approved. Ordinance number 17-0-122. An ordinance providing for the issuance and sale of bonds in the maximum principal amount of $1,480,000 for the purpose of paying costs of improving Springbrook Gardens Park by constructing and improving asphalt paths, driveways, surface parking areas, and drainage facilities, together with the necessary appurtenances thereto for city park and recreational purposes and declaring an emergency. Any comments? Move to suspend. Second. Please call the roll. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? <coughs> yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Who do approve? Second. Please call the roll. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Ordinance number 17-0-122 has been approved. Ordinance number 17-0-123. An ordinance providing for the issuance and sale of bonds in the maximum principal amount of $1,735,000 for the purpose of paying costs of reconstructing Marigold Road, <coughs> including improvements to related sanitary and drainage facilities, and declaring an emergency. Mr. Filippia? Just one comment on this. Um, this week, uh, residents along Marigold Road will receive a letter from the city detailing the construction schedule. Uh, the improvements and the in the improvements there and the impacts of the road construction project uh, weather permitting we anticipate that uh, the sanitary sewer lateral reconstruction will start next week uh, november 27th and access will be maintained for residents there although there will be selective road closures occur at the location of each lateral replacement so the approach by uh, lake county <coughs> utilities was not to re line the main sanitary sewer there. It was felt that the, uh, uh, the real culprits out there in the condition was to replace the, is to realign, realign the um, sanitary laterals. So individual homeowners will be impacted uh, when it's their turn, but otherwise they'll be able to continue uh, access to the neighborhood throughout the course of that construction. It'll be tricky and probably a little frustrating, but at the end of the day, we're building an entirely new road there. Um, so uh, uh, probably get a few phone calls, Councilman <laughs> well, Krieger, but it will be a nice project in the end. So on the sanitary for the, for the laterals from the, from the home to the main, they're gonna take care of all those connections at their cost? From the right-of-way line to the main, <clears throat> they're gonna replace the laterals. The county is paying for that cost. From the right-of-way? Correct. Okay. We don't have that diagram problem again, right? No, and the idea being, just like we confronted um, earlier, uh, they, the idea is we don't want to dig up a brand new road in the, right. in the interim. So um, if the sanitary main ever needs to be relined, that could be done 
without having to dig up the roadway, but okay. those laterals will be done now. Okay. Move to suspend. Second. Please call the roll. Mrs. Stalling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? <laughs> yes. Mr. Marm? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Do Landon? approve. Second. Yes. Do <laughs> <Do> approve. <laughs> Mrs. Stalling, please call the roll. Mrs. Stalling, yes. Mr. Kirchner. You got a million point seven reasons to hurry. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Mr. Krieger. Yes. Mr. Martin. Yes. Mr. Blake. Yes. Mr. Donovan. Yes. Mr. Landing. Yes. <laughs> Mrs. President. Yes, Mr. Before going <laughs> forward, uh, scouts and uh, guys here for government, what have you, these are all. These are all issues that we're dealing with the city that we've already talked about in the budgeting for even the last couple of years. So now it's coming time for these projects and so now we are issuing debt or raising money so that we could pay for these projects. So that's why we're just kind of rolling right through it. Okay, make more sense? I see everybody kind of looking around. <laughs> okay, so that's why it's just kind of like formality. Okay, thank you. You just saw, you see the expression on her face, Mr. Ryan. I, I got to tell you, there's at least there's at least one member of that audience that has to live this on a daily basis. I won't say which one. Uh, okay. All right. Ordinance number 17-0-124, an ordinance providing the issuance and sale of bonds, the maximum principal amount of seven hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars for the purpose of paying costs for improving Heisley Road by widening, resurfacing, paving, curbing, trenching, constructing storm sewers and related drainage, traffic signalization and installing signage and declaring an emergency. Mr. Filipiak. The installation of our new traffic signal, Heisley Road is done. <laughs> Gentlemen. Move to suspend. Second. Please call the roll. Mrs. Dowling. Yes. Mr. Kirchner. Yes. Mr. Krieger. Yes. Mr. Marn. Yes. Mr. Blake. Yes. Mr. Donovan. Yes. Mr. Landing. Yes. Move to approve. Second. Please call the roll. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Yeah. I just have one comment. You know, uh, this is a road project, and uh, we had a work session prior to this meeting, and I, I know people often talk about the roads, but uh, we're putting in, what, $1.5 million in uh, road work on uh, some of our side roads and there was what up, upwards of five to ten million dollars of road work going on in the city at any given time during any given year is that a pretty accurate that that's accurate councilman and I you know this Heisey Road uh, phase phase three project is a good example of that because in the end mr. Swigger the final cost was about million, be almost five between six. five and six million um, so We've done a few of those in recent years. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Ordinance number 17-0-124 has been approved. Ordinance number 17-0-125. An ordinance providing for the issuance and sale of bonds in the maximum principal amount of $600,000 for the purpose of paying costs of constructing an extension to Plaza Boulevard to intersect with St. Clair Avenue and connect with Tyler Boulevard via Clover Avenue and declaring an emergency. Mr. Filipiak. Uh, thank you, Madam President, and I, as, as good a time as anyway, because I can keep it from my manager's report to tell you that CSX is estimating that it'll pr take approximately six weeks for them to complete their work. Um, uh, with the holidays, they don't expect to be completed until mid-January of 2018. Uh, and obviously the road will not be open to traffic until both railroads are satisfied with the signal operation, but the end is near. Mm -hmm. this is bad. Second. Please call the roll. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Move to approve. Second. Please call the roll. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Pardon? Ordinance number 17-0-125 has been approved. Ordinance number 17-0-126. <clears throat> An ordinance providing for the issuance and sale of bonds in the maximum principal amount of $2,550,000 for the purpose of paying costs of acquiring the real estate formerly known as Springbrook Gardens, including the buildings and structures thereon, 
fixtures there too and related furnishings and equipment for city park and recreational <coughs> purposes and declaring an emergency. Gentlemen? We'll just suspend. Second. Please call the roll. Mrs. Stalling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Who to approve? Second. Please call the roll. Mrs. Stalling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Ordinance number 17-0-126 has been approved. Ordinance number 17-0-127. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with Lake County Soil and Water Conservation District to hold a conservation easement and environmental covenant over the two town ditch restoration project area and declaring an emergency. Mr. Filipiak. Thank you, Madam President. And this is really the final piece uh, that we need to have in place before we can begin construction. As council is aware, the uh, two town restoration project is under contract. We are required under the terms of our, uh, uh, of our permit through the Army Corps to uh, have someone uh, hold a water conservation easement in perpetuity over this area. We feel more comfortable utilizing one of our uh, environmental partners in the area, in this case, Lake County Soil and Water uh, Department. And Mr. Swigger, could you uh, go over the terms of that agreement, please? Yes. Uh uh, the city will uh, pay the Soil and Water <laughs> Conservation District an annual fee of uh, $4,000 over, over a 10-year period for inspection and administrative services associated with stewardship and the holding of the conservation easements. After the 10-year period ends in 2028, the city will pay Soil and Water an annual fee of $300 to cover any future hourly inspection costs. It's recommended that the legislation be approved to allow for the construction of the two-town ditch restoration project to begin this winter. And uh, once approved by City Council, the easements uh, will be forwarded to the Army Corps of Engineers and the Ohio EPA for final approval. Once approved, the easements will be filed at the Lake County Recorder's Office. And we do expect the agencies to approve the easements soon after they are returned, allowing the work to begin mid to late December. Thank you. Move to suspend. Second. Please call the roll. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Who do approve? Second. Please call the roll. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Ordinance number 17-0-127 has been approved. Ordinance number 17-0-128. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with WatchGuard Video for the purchase of 30 body-worn cameras and declaring an emergency. Mr. Filipiak. Thank you, Madam President. And as Council is aware, uh, we have appropriated dollars in the 2017 budget to allow uh, the police department to um, commit, uh, implement its commitment to our officers uh, wearing body-worn cameras. And I'll ask Chief Knight to discuss further. Thank you, Mr. Filipiak, Madam President, members of council, as the manager mentioned, we did budget $100,000 in the 2017 budget for the body-worn camera system. In 2013, we installed an in-car camera system using the WatchGuard product. This system records video in high definition as well as audio from both the front-facing camera in the car as well as the camera facing the rear seat of police car. The system wireless, wirelessly uploads the video to a secure server in a station which eliminates any possibility of the video system being tampered with. With the WatchGuard product, we're also able to send video via a link to both the city prosecutor and county prosecutor's office, eliminating the need to make copies for these agencies. We have not experienced any problems with the WatchGuard product in the four years that we've been using it. While looking at different body camera systems, the WatchGuard Vista, Watch Vista system also offers high definition recording it has a 130 degree field of view, an adjustable lens that rotates 40 <laughs> degrees to be able to compensate for different mounting positions on the officer's uniform. The Vista body camera also automatically syncs up with the in-car watch guard, uh, in-car <laughs> video system, uh, downloading all the car and body cam video into one file. So if you want to view a file from an incident, you see the front facing camera, the rear facing camera, and the officer's body camera all in one file. You don't have to go to separate systems to do that. 
the Vista camera, body camera, also replaces and serves as the microphone for the body camera as well as the in-car camera, eliminating the microphone the officers wear now, which is about the size of like a former type of pager the officers wear now. Uh, the body camera will serve both of those purposes. We have checked with numerous other body camera systems and none of them will sync up with our current in-car system uh, as we would like to do. We looked at this over years. We've put off doing this until something like this was available that could all work together. We are recommending the purchase of 30 watch guard Vista body camera systems and all necessary hardware, software, and licensing. The cost of that is $103,060. $103,060 was $100, was budgeted for this program and we'll be uh, making up the rest from money from existing accounts we have now. Thank you. Can I answer any questions? Gentlemen? We'll just spend. Second. Please call the roll. This is Dowling. Yes. Mr. Kirchner. Yes. Mr. Krieger. Yes. Mr. Martin. Yes. Mr. Blake. Yes. Mr. Donovan. Yes. Mr. Landig. Yes. Move to approve. Second. Please call the roll. <coughs> Mrs. Dowling. Yes. Mr. Kirchner. Yes. Mr. Krieger. Yes. Mr. Martin. Yes. Mr. Blake. Yes. Mr. Donovan. Yes. Mr. Landig. Yes. Ordinance number 17-0-128 has been approved. Second reading. Ordinance number 17-0-117. An ordinance amending Part 13, Title 5, Chapter 1349 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of Menor 2006 as amended, the same relating to definitions and maintenance of premises. Mr. Filippia? Um, nothing to add. Defer to the law director for comments. Okay. Um, at the last meeting, there were some concerns raised by some residents relative to um, the ordinance, the I think the first and the primary being that uh, um, uh, that boats uh, weren't really covered by this. Uh, <clears throat> there was some uh, comment that we were had confused licensing uh, with registration. Boats are registered, uh, vehicles are licensed. Um, in fact, the the ordinance as drafted uh, took that into account under uh, section W of definitions where we essentially declare that licensing and registration are synonymous. They're one and the same. So in other parts of the ordinance where we refer to uh, a, a lack of licensing, we're also referring to a lack of registration. So um, that, that concern uh, re really doesn't apply. Um, I think beyond that, though, uh, the, the concern that was being raised, too, was um, whether um, the ordinance would be applied um, reasonably. Um, you know, there was uh, some talk about, you know, uh, that we were going to run around and uh, require every bo boat to show that it's registered and, and that there'd be a lot of activity. And so it occurred to me that, you know, these are just words on a piece of paper, and it would be uh, better to give you a depiction of what code enforcement uh, and the prosecution uh, of these cases um, really involves, you know, to, to give it some context. So with that being said, um, I'd like to go to a, uh, some photographs from some past cases to show you how this really works out in the street instead of in the abstract of, uh, you know, just a, an ordinance. And the first one is a car. Can we bring that up, number one? <coughs> okay. Now, um, what's unusual about this, this vehicle uh, is that, and, and this is where I wanted to give you a flavor of how these things go, um, uh, uh, although I do humorously think of this Somewhere vehicle as having a cloaking device uh, <laughs> so that you can't see the license uh, from the street right-of-way. Um, it certainly uh, is easy to see, though, that it's inoperable, uh, which is one of the elements that goes into whether we're going to do something about a, a vehicle. So um, what's unusual about this one is that it showed up while we were already in court with this person to get them to clean up other parts of the property. So even though you can have somebody in court being prosecuted uh, for violations of the nuisance ordinance, um, that doesn't stop them from continuing to accumulate things and this car I'm pretty sure had to be flatbedded to the location it, it it could not be driven 
So, um, and, and the reason I point that out is that uh, there was some uh, concern raised about tractors because tractors are defined as a vehicle. Well, um, you know, if, if this person had seen a old Ford NAA out there uh, or possibly even an old steam tractor and somebody would have been willing to flatbed it to his front driveway because they wanted to get rid of it because it was inoperable and they couldn't fix it and it would be expensive to do something with it, it could have ended up there, okay? So um, it, it's not that tractors are uh, running around, uh, running amok on our streets without license plates on them. We, we know they don't need license plates. But what we also know is that you can never tell what somebody's gonna drag home. Um, and tractors are not uncommon around here. And so if somebody did drag home a, a, a tractor and started disassembling it in their driveway, like this car ended up, um, I wouldn't be able to do anything about it unless we amended the code. And that's what, uh, as long as we were gonna amend the code, we wanted to try to make it complete because we don't wanna bring it back every six months. Uh, we go into our experience of what we've seen the last five years and we add those elements to it that we think will cover for the next five years. So um, that, that's why this car is here. It, it, like I said, it showed up while we had another case going on in court. The next item is uh, a cannibalized um, jet ski. Okay, it is clearly inoperable, although it might have a current license on it. Um, you know, the licenses last for three years, and this ended up at a property. Uh, can't be used for anything, um, but under our code right now, we can't make them get rid of it. And, and I guess the, the, the story that I would like to let you know is the bigger the item is, the more I want that we have named that item in the ordinance. Um, when you prosecute a case, the courts want some level of objectivity. And uh, it's one thing to say there's a bunch of trash and refuse there uh, without having to you know, try to name everything. It's another thing where you can get a large object like a vehicle or a tractor or a jet ski. Uh, could be a kayak, could be a canoe, who knows? Um, there's, there's no end to, of effort and imagination of some persons to bring things home. And you know, that's just what they do. Uh, no real criticism of them, but after a while the neighbors get tired of it and they want counsel uh, through its officials uh, to get something done about it. So this is an example of a, uh, you know, a personal watercraft that right now we don't cover. Next item. This is my favorite. Um, it's uh, the Flying Dutchman, uh, Menner's version of the Flying Dutchman. Uh, uh, the youngsters out there might not know what the Flying Dutchman is. The Flying Dutchman is a, is a legendary sailing ship that has been plying the oceans uh, for centuries because it is manned by the dead and they can't put into port. Um, and this uh, vessel is not unlike the Flying Dutchman because it can't put into port either. <laughs> it's suspended from a tree uh, with a chain uh, at the back and, and a prop at the front. And um, we don't cover this right <coughs> now. Uh, this, uh, this came up. Uh, we, we have some <coughs> other vessels uh, too. Um, but th this is what we get, and this is the kind of matter that we would like to address. Um, we're, we're not an enforcement agent for the Ohio Department of Natural Resources or um, the Bureau of Motor Vehicles. We're not out checking licenses, whether they're lapsed or their registrations, whether they're lapsed. Um, but if we get a call from a, a neighbor that's complaining about the condition of a property, it's one of the elements that could go into us making a finding that the vehicle or the vessel um, is, you know, at the point in time where it's obsolete and needs to be moved along. And, and that's what these revisions do. They give us a few more tools to get the job done because this is the job that we're doing, okay? We're not, you know, checking everybody's license plate. Uh, we're showing up at, at houses where uh, junk vehicles have been deposited and are becoming a nuisance and an eyesore. Uh, so whether it's a vehicle or a vessel, uh, we just want to take care of it. 
And the first approach, as I mentioned at the last meeting, is uh, code enforcement goes out and has a visit. Um, we, we try to get people to come into compliance uh, voluntarily, and then with a little pushing, and then a little more pushing, and then with that, when that doesn't work, we, we go to court. Um, but we do want specificity in the ordinance. The larger the object, the more we want it put in the ordinance that that can be a nuisance condition. So I don't have anything else to say unless somebody has some questions. Mr. Landick. Uh, Madam President, uh, the saying uh, picture is worth a thousand words is, is uh, apparent here. The law director has given us pictures and at least a thousand words. <laughs> uh, Coming from the engineer. <laughs> Less than normal. <laughs> because this ordinance has generated public comment, uh, it is, behooves us as council to uh, give the public a chance for their thousand words as well. And accordingly, I'd like to request this ordinance go to third reading. Second. So moved. Okay. Um, third readings, we have none. Um, and before we go to the manager's report, I think we'd all like to take a minute to congratulate the Mentor High School football team on their victory last Friday. It was quite the nail biter. And as Mr. Marn mentioned, um, we have some guests this evening. So we have some scouts, and it looks like we also have some high school students. So would Start with the scouts. Would you like to stand up and identify yourself? We're from uh, Hopkins Elementary, Pack 79. Very cool. Okay. Okay, and it looks like we have some high school students with us. Very good. Welcome, you guys. Welcome. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Proud father there. <laughs> okay, manager's report. I can't follow that, can I? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, it, it reminds me that the last time that some members of council, the first time that uh, that young lady was in this council chamber, at least a couple of members of council were here, and she was quite a bit shorter at it. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Just a reminder that the city's annual yard waste collection program ends the week of December 11th. Also, the Thursday and Friday waste collection routes this week will be delayed one day due to the observance of the Thanksgiving holiday. Fire prevention is working with our retail community, giving special attention to fire lanes, exit ways, and occupancy loads to ensure that aisles and exits are kept clear. During the upcoming busy holiday shopping weekend, we ask residents to do their part to help keep these areas clear as well. The city hosted and successfully completed a two-day New World Systems Tyler Tech Public Safety Software Regional User Conference uh, this past November 15th and 16th at the Civic Center. Approximately 50 agencies from Ohio, Kentucky, and West Virginia participated there, and it was nice to be uh, at the center of that. Last weekend, heavy rainfall caused the Garfield Pond, uh, Park Pond to overtop its north bank. As a result, the fill that was placed into the dewatering ditch washed out and caused water from the pond to drain out. We are currently working with the contractor to install <coughs> a permanent ditch enclosure that will prevent this from happening in the future. Uh, the Garfield Park left turn lane project is now substantially complete. Sidewalk replacement was finished this week. The first phase of uh, bunker reconstruction at Blackbrook Golf Course will begin next week and uh, play will not be affected during the construction. I know uh, Mr. Donovan doesn't hit it in the bunkers anyway, so it wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't impact him. Uh, Council, I'd like to please ask for a little feedback on this next item. As part of uh, Great Lakes Restoration Initiative grant that the city participated in, the Nature Conservancy has performed selective removal of the invasive European black alder tree along the main trail and bluffs overlooking the lake. Approximately 40% of the removal has yet to occur. Uh, council has seen the work that's been performed to date. It is the administration's intent to authorize the removal of the remaining 40% of those alder trees under the terms of the existing agreement, unless there is objection from city council. It, it would be our intent to then work with the Nature Conservancy on a restoration plan to include both short and long-term plantings with native species. 
Mr. Krieger. Uh, the Lagoons Committee met earlier today, and it was our recommendation that we do move forward with this, with the other 40% getting rid of the uh, alder trees. So hearing no further objections, any objections from council, we will authorize that work, which would uh, we anticipate would be completed before the end of this month. And then, of course, we look forward to working with council on elements of that restoration plan and some long-term conservation efforts out there as well. Thank you. Mentor City offices will be closed on Thursday and Friday, November 23rd and 24th for the Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, City of Mentor invites you and your family to join us for a commemorative tree lighting as we light up the City Hall campus on Tuesday, December 5th at 6 p.m., of course immediately preceding Council's uh, regularly scheduled meeting at 7. Santa will arrive in his horse-drawn carriage and will be available for photos while Mentor Public Schools choirs entertain us with their holiday favorites. Free refreshments will be available and then uh, following the lighting, uh, those interested can join uh, uh, several um, others at the Menor Ice Arena for a free family holiday open skate that same evening. Small Business Saturday is this Saturday, and it's no secret that Menor is a shopping and dining destination with over 300 retailers and 170 restaurants. It may surprise many of our residents to learn that over 135 of these establishments are independently owned. So uh, shop small this weekend and support our local businesses. Remember, 68 cents of every dollar spent locally stays local. And then uh, finally, we have one new business that we want to welcome to the community. The Pink Bandana Bakery, located at 8630 Menor Avenue. They will be open this Friday on Black Friday at 4 a.m. Stop in. Pink Elves, we understand, will be handing out <laughs> cookies. So uh, we want to thank them for their investment and confidence in our community, and we wish them great success. That's all. <coughs> Janet? Yeah. Just a quick uh, follow-up. Uh, you mentioned the, the road project going on at Garfield. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Swigger, for updating me today after I got a call from a resident about the traffic on Menor Avenue. <coughs> and uh, it's good to know that uh, all lanes will be open, uh, two lanes in either direction on Menor Avenue for Black Friday. So. <laughs> Shop and manner, the roads will be clear. <coughs> Madam President? Yes, Mr. Dodd. Now that we're on the subject of cones and barrels, just real quick. 615 and uh, uh, the new development on 615 by yours truly, they had that blocked off today. You think that's going to happen tomorrow again at, at rush hour? That, <coughs> there was uh, one lane at rush hour this evening uh, on that portion. Do you know if you know, I don't have the schedule. If we have any uh, lanes closed uh, tomorrow, they're currently installing sanitary sewer lateral connections. Okay. All right, thank you. So I'll, <coughs> I'll check on that. Okay, clerk's correspondence. Council is in receipt of uh, transfer of stock of liquor permit for Brunner Funeral Home, Inc., and also Menor Municipal Court, October 2017, month end report. Commission and Committee Reports, Council's in receipt of the meeting minutes of the Community Arts Commission, September 7th and October 5th, 2017. Municipal Planning Commission, September 12th, 2017. Board of Building and Zoning Appeals, October 10th, 2017. And the Tree Commission, October 11th, 2017. Old business. Hearing that? New business. Mrs. President. Yes, Mr. Mayor. At our last meeting, uh, we had a little bit of discussion and we passed uh, a new leash law since we didn't have one before. Um, at that meeting, I made a few comments and uh, Mr. <laughs> Hennig uh, gave me a call after he thought about my comments. And then uh, I met with uh, uh, City Manager Ken Flipiak and our, our two chiefs yesterday and that was one of the issues we discussed. Um, so, uh, would, Richard, could you get with the, the administration and the chiefs and, and further discuss uh, what we did with uh, the leash law and see if we have to uh, go back and do anything else to it? Sure. I appreciate this so that you guys know. It was good feedback. It made sense. Okay. <clears throat> Any other new business? Madam Mr. President. Kirchner. Okay, I've got some cancellation requests that I'd like to make a motion <clears throat> on for July 17th, August 17th, and December 18th of 2018. And that is a motion. We have a second? Second. Is that canceling the meetings? Yes. Oh, okay. Please call the roll. 
Mr. Donovan. Oh, excuse me, Mrs. Dowling. Yes. Mr. Kirchner. Yes. Mr. Krieger. Yes. Mr. Landig. Yes. Mr. Marn. Yes. Mr. Blake. Yes. Mr. Donovan. Yes. Madam President, I'm not done yet. Uh, I have two other meetings I, that we need to uh, change due to a conflict with one with the election day of 2018 and the other one for uh, New Year's Day of 2019. So uh, in that, I'd like to make a motion to change the November 6, 2018 meeting to November 7th. Second. Please call the roll. Mrs. Dowling. Yes. Mr. Kirshner. Yes. Mr. Krieger. Yes. Mr. Landig. Yes. Mr. Marn. Yes. Mr. Blake. Yes. Mr. Donovan. Yes. And lastly, to change January 1st, 2019 meeting to January 2nd, 2019. Please call the roll. Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mr. Kirchner? Yes. Mr. Krieger? Yes. Mr. Landig? Yes. Mr. Marn? Yes. Mr. Blake? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, while we're on new business, uh, the City of Menor is accepting resumes and applications for the following volunteer positions. We have three four-year terms on the Board of Building and Zoning Appeals, four four-year terms on the Municipal Planning Commission, two four-year terms on the Civil Service Commission, two three-year terms on the Community Arts Commission, one three-year term on the Fair Housing Board, two two-year terms on the Income Tax Board of Review, and one four-year term on the Tree Commission ending December 31st, 2021. Uh, men or residents seeking appointment to the position can submit an application and resume to our Clerk of Council. Deadline for submission is 5 p.m. December 15, 2017. For more information and to obtain an application, contact our Clerk of Council at Schiavone at cityofmenor.com or call 440-974-5700. Would you mention that they should be a registered voter? They have to be a registered oh, voter? Oh, yes. And uh, in accordance with Mr. Hennig, you would need to be a re registered voter to apply for these positions. Thank you. Hey, any other new business, gentlemen? Okay, hearing none. Uh, persons before council. We have two persons this evening. The first is John Felice. John, please come forward, identify yourself and your address, please. Yes, my name is John Felice. Uh, I live at 7551 Acacia Avenue in Menor, lifelong resident. Um, I'm here for two purposes tonight. Um, I have to be honest with you, at the last meeting I attended, I left feeling somewhat uneasy. Uh, the reason for my unpleasant thoughts was that I left with a feeling that if the issue concerning the rezoning of 615 and 90 were to be voted down by the residents of Menor, that if a lawsuit were to be presented, and I've heard rumors of that, I haven't <clears throat> substantiated them, I left with a feeling that the city would capitulate due to the financial strain of that. I may have misconstrued that, and that would be my fault. Um, I did take the liberty of having some printed material because I like audiovisual aids, like your pictures on the board today. I do have enough copies for all council and anyone else that may be interested in that. I know that I brought that lawsuit up, and I was just wanting to make sure that city council and maybe the members and law director did their due diligence and looked into that lawsuit. Um, I feel that the city residents have spoken and we should do the best to represent their wishes. This may be an avenue for us to uh, instigate or <coughs> mount a defense. Um, the other one, may, while it may seem petty, um, I have talked to no less than three city council members about this, um, a number of years ago, one of the council members did step forward and took care of this problem, but it has re-arose. Anybody that lives in the city of Menor more than likely gets a piece of newspaper thrown in their driveway. Sometimes in the fall, it gets covered up with leaves and gets chewed up by your lawnmower. In the winter months, it gets covered up by snow and gets chewed up by your snowblower. My hypothetical question today would be, if I were to drive past one of your houses, or city hall, or the police department, or fire department, and knowingly discard something you did not want on your property, would I be charged with littering? 
When I presented this question, I was told more than likely yes. Well, that's what's happening. And more than one resident on my street and I have discussed this. If I were to be charged with littering and I'm going to be held to the standards of zoning, why are the laws not being equally applied to large corporations and companies as they are to private citizens? I am not hard to reach. Some have responded, some have not. I just feel that um, the laws are not being applied equally. If anyone would like copies of this, please feel free to see me after the meeting. I have plenty for you. If anyone would like to get a hold of me about my problem with the littering, and it is littering, I can be reached at 440-376-2337. That's 376 beer for the people who can't remember numbers. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Felice. Okay, next we have Deborah McCauley. Deborah, please come forward. Identify yourself and your address, please. Hello, again, Deborah McCauley, 6730 Farmingdale Lane of Mentor, Ohio. Uh, as we all know, on November 7th, an election took place, and the official uh, <coughs> results tonight uh, are 4,833 people voted for the rezoning, and 7,025 voted against it. So the property remains zoned as conservation. Uh, I reviewed the previous city council meetings um, last evening, a long evening, uh, and I was actually very delighted to hear our law director, Mr. Hennig, state that if the Menard voters voted this down, that we would fight. And I'm asking city council members, please, I'm thanking you in advance for supporting the wishes of the majority. I'm hoping that no one will acquiesce to the demands of the opposition, either in or out of court and out of the voters' hands. I ask you, please, to do the right thing. Support your voters. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, Deborah. Second. We're adjourned. Yes, sir.